Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my fangirl favorites of April 2015. Not too many things that I particularly fangirled about this month, but still, I found a few things. <laughs> I got around to finally seeing Cinderella this month, I believe. I can't remember if I saw Cinderella near the end of March, but the way I film these fangirl favorites, sometimes uh, the last week of the month doesn't make my fangirl favorites. So yeah, I might have seen Cinderella at the end of March, but but yeah, either way, it's going in April fangirl favorites. I really loved Cinderella. Oh god. Such an improvement compared to Maleficent's The Angelina Jolie movie. I honestly did not like Maleficent that much. I found it kind of boring and I just feel like it strayed way way too far away from the original material. Whereas with Cinderella, that's what I liked about Cinderella is how closely it stuck to the cartoon but at the same time enhanced things but didn't enhance things so much that they were kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I just thought that in general Cinderella it was fun, it was cute, it was vibrant. Yeah, it was it was a bit over the top in places but I think that was kind of done on purpose. I thought Kenneth Branagh's directing was excellent. In general I love when he directs movies because he, he has kind of a, a particular sort of the style that I can kind of tell is his style. And then above all, I definitely really love the casting choices. Uh, Lily James. I love Lily James from Downton Abbey where she plays uh, Lady Rose. She was just such a perfect Cinderella casting. I just can't imagine anyone else in that role now as Cinderella. Lily James, she was just so beautiful. The, the hair, the clothing, just everything was great on her. And then I definitely loved Richard Madden as uh, the Prince, Prince Kit. He gets a name. Normally in Cinderella he's just called like Prince Charming, so it was nice that uh, he was Prince Kit. But yeah, Richard Madden, I've loved him because he played Rob Stark on Game of Thrones. Ah, oh, Rob Stark. <laughs> But yeah, I loved him a lot in Cinderella, and I, I definitely thought Richard Madden and Lily James had some fantastic chemistry together. They really worked wonderfully with each other. They didn't have too many scenes with each other, but the few scenes that they did have, they were really great. And I just thought that their relationship in general, Kit and Cinderella, I thought that it played out naturally in the movie. It didn't feel rushed, you know, whereas in the cartoon, Cinderella and Prince Charming, they meet at the ball, and that's it. So I liked that uh, the script writers, they had Kit and Cinderella meet prior to the ball. That way it wasn't like so strange and weird that she was, you know, fangirling about the prince. <laughs> Kate Blanchett as the evil stepmother. Wonderful casting. Kate Blanchett, you can never go wrong with Kate Blanchett. She's just great in anything. <laughs> and then I also really loved Holiday Granger and Sophie McShira as the, the stepsisters. Holiday Granger, I've probably been a fan of Holiday Granger for a good decade now. I've seen her in just so many BBC shows. And then Sophie McShira, she's also on Downton Abbey as a day so so yeah in general I was just I was just in love with the cast because I recognized so many people I think I recognized the entire cast so so yeah the cast just perfect for me <laughs> I was definitely fangirling so yeah have you guys seen Cinderella and what did you think did you enjoy it as much as me I, I definitely really just adored it and the thing is, Cinderella has also given me hope for the new Beauty and the Beast that is being made. I was really worried about this new Beauty and the Beast that's coming up. It's going to be starring Emma Watson as Belle, Dan Stevens as the Beast, Luke Evans as Gaston. Like I said, I, I was really disappointed with Maleficent, so I was kind of worried about Beauty and the Beast. But yeah, now that I see how well Cinderella went, and now that I also know that Beauty and the Beast, they're going to be following kind of more along the lines of the stage production, the musical, I'm kind of feeling really good about what Disney's going to do with the live action Beauty and the Beast. But running in line here with, with Beauty and the Beast, uh, like I said, I just, I just love the casting of Emma Watson and Dan Stevens. Really terrific casting right there. But the thing is, how am I going to hate Gaston? You guys, how am I going to hate Gaston when he's played by the gorgeous 
wonderful, talented Luke Evans. I'm probably going to be sitting there wanting to ship Gaston and Belle when I shouldn't be. <laughs> Does anyone else having conflicting feelings about Luke Evans as Gaston? Uh, seriously, I'm, I'm probably going to be in love with him. <laughs> So yeah, that's enough of the, the Disney stuff. Moving on to another movie that I watched this month. I saw The Woman in Gold starring Helen Mirren and Ryan Reynolds, along with a host of other actors. The, the cast list for this movie was ridiculous, but great. The Woman in Gold, um, it takes place in both a historical setting in uh, World War II Austria, and then also present day, or not present day, but 1998 uh, um, California. And it's about this, this older woman, played by Helen Mirren, and she wants back a, a priceless painting of her, of her aunt. And Ryan Reynolds is her lawyer, and so together they have to try and persuade the Austrian government to hand back her painting, because that the painting of her aunt was wrongfully stolen by the Nazis during World War II. But to Austria, this painting, The Woman in Gold, is, it is comparable to the Mona Lisa for Italy. So yeah, The Woman in Gold is is like the Mona Lisa for Austria. So yeah, the Austrian people and the government, they don't want to give up this valuable, iconic painting, but yet yeah, it rightfully belongs to Helen Mirren's character. And it has an emotional connection there because it is a portrait of her aunt. So yeah, it's it means more to her, really. And playing Helen Mirren in the, the flashbacks, in the World War II flashbacks, was Tatiana Maslany from Orphan Black. Oh, I, I honestly didn't know Tatiana Maslany was going to be in this movie. She was so great. She spoke in German the whole movie, pretty much. Uh, she sounded like a genuine G German person. And then also playing um, her her husband in those flashbacks was Max Irons, who I also really love from the White Queen miniseries. But yeah, in general, The Woman in Gold, you guys, it oh, a really fantastic, beautiful, heartwarming, touching heartbreaking, just so many adjectives I could use. Just a really wonderful movie. And if you guys have not seen it, please go see it. You will not be disappointed. It was so great from start to finish. So I guess that's it for my fangirl favorites this month. In the comments below, I want you guys to share with me any television shows or movies or music or just whatever uh, that you enjoyed this month, that you fangirled or fanboyed about. Just let me know and uh, maybe I'll go check out those things too. So that's it for this month's Fangirl Favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you liked this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.